Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the one change that radio control jet engine manufacturers could do to drastically improve the efficiency of their jet engines. But first, before we dive into the content here for today, I do want to thank the patrons of the RC Explained community. Thanks a lot for all of your support. I do want to announce this is the very first time that I'm gonna be able to bring in what I classify as a high performance battery pack for the RC community. Now this is being the first time here that we're gonna be able to test the battery using all the typical tests that we use here on the channel. And I'm super excited to be able to do this and I hope you guys will be as well. As for this video, I do wanna thank Engine DIY for sending me this common engine that represents our commercial airliner jet engine, being a turbo fan of multi-stages. We're gonna go through that here shortly. But if you haven't caught the video where we went into the major differences and went into a little bit more detail about that, I'm going to leave a link in the description here below. So now let's take a look at this engine from Engine DIY and summarize the key differences between these two engines. As we look at the very front section of the engine, we can see major differences already. One of the biggest things that we see is there is a fan at the front end of the engine and this fan is what ultimately gives this engine its name being a turbo fan style engine as opposed to our radio controlled engine, there is no air that goes around the actual outside core of the engine. Therefore, this engine is known as a turbojet. Now, another difference here between the actual compressors that we have in our typical airliner engine versus our RC engine is the compressor in the RC engine is known as a centrifugal type of compressor, meaning that air actually comes in through the center in the middle and then gets directed radially outside as opposed to our airliner engine where we actually have air coming in axially and it stays that way right through the compressor stages. And one thing that you'll also notice about the stages of compressors in our airliner engine, there is multiple quantities there of different stages that are used on the compressor side of the engine. However, our radio control jet engine only uses one stage. And it's very similarly if we jump to the back side of this engine where we have multiple turbine wheels being used inside of the airliner engine versus our RC engine where it only uses a singular stage. There's a bunch of different simplicities that are used there in our radio controlled engine. Now let's talk about the performance that we get out of our radio controlled jet engine and also compare that up against the typical and common EDS. This is an electric ducted fan jet that we're going to be comparing these values up against. So here you can see a graph and this graph actually shows us the performance that we get out of this typical turbo jet engine. You can see that as the speed along the X axis increases, we don't really lose much thrust in terms of the performance that we get at that new speed. And if you look and compare this up against the actual motors that are being used inside of these electric ducted fans, we see a massive amount of drop off that we get from the EDF style engines. There is a trade off here where those EDFs power the jet that they're in and there is less dynamic thrust being produced as the speed of that airplane increases. However, performance is still quite good on an EDF jet and there's not too many people that would complain about them unless of course they have flown a jet powered by jet fuel. What these graphs don't show is the actual speed of air or exhaust gases coming out of the jet engine after burning fuel, what that speed is. Most jet engines of the radio control world are throwing out exhaust gases in excess of a thousand kilometers an hour. And there are a handful of jet engines that actually exceed 1500 kilometers an hour in terms of the exhaust gases. That is a significant amount of air coming out or exhaust gases coming out of those engines, considering that the typical airplane will not generally fly more than about 300 kilometers an hour. And if you have a 300 kilometer 
mile an hour jet. That is moving for sure. Now, the big difference here, if you look at what a typical electric ducted fan jet engine would be doing, it would be doing somewhere between maybe 200 to 400 kilometers an hour. So one of the things to compare here is the drastic difference between 1500 kilometers an hour versus 400. In theory, if we were to take that jet engine and drop its e-flux or the exhaust gas speed coming out by a thousand kilometers an hour down to 500 kilometers an hour, we would still be looking at an engine with really good performance. Not the best performance, but it would still be really good and definitely be able to fly any type of jet going 300 kilometers an hour or even beyond that as well. In reality, this drastic drop in e-flux would not make a massive, massive difference to the performance that you get from a jet engine. Now, the big question is, why are we covering all this conversation about the speed of the exhaust gases or speed of the air exiting an EDF fan setup? And the big reason is, is because there's a drastic difference. And if we actually bring those values closer together, we don't need to sink as much energy into speeding up the air because we're essentially not using all that extra speed. We want to make as much dynamic and static thrust that we can actually achieve. Dynamic thrust for many of us is a lot more important as well than the static thrust. So that is still important, but we can play with numbers in order to get us something that still works. The one major component that we could change inside of a radio controlled jet engine would essentially be the fan that exists at the front of a modern typical airliner engine, turning our turbojet engine into a turbofan engine. Now I've quickly drawn up a mock-up of what I feel this would kind of look like and to give you guys an idea of what this would look like too. So let's go through the few parts that actually make this possible. Right at the front of the engine, what I have here, you remove the nose cone, the starter, all those components off the front and we extend that shaft by first using a transmission. And when this is gonna essentially be a planetary gear style transmission. And the reason why we want that is because we wanna minimize the diameter and we wanna minimize the length that we're actually going to consume within this engine because we still need air flowing around these parts in order to get into our compressor wheel. So once we have that transmission, we can knock down the RPMs of the output shaft that's gonna come out from our compressor. And we want that because our fan is gonna take a lot more power to rotate, meaning we can't rotate that fan as fast. This way we drop the RPMs and this will work perfect for us. Now, once we have the shaft extended, we can place our fan right onto that shaft. We need a couple new shroud pieces that allow the fan to operate in such a way where air comes inside the engine still gets directed to our compressor and the air that's going to travel around the outside core of the engine from our fan. We have that air being directed by this shroud. Now that serves the purpose of our overall outer turbine case. So now that you have all those components put in place, this is essentially what would be required in order to get this type of system to just work. Now I understand that this is a mock-up and certainly does not represent the entire you know, design efforts that would be required to make this work. And we'll get to that very shortly, some of the complexities here that we're introducing. Now, as a result of being able to do this, I would expect that we would be able to see an absolute minimum of 18% increase in efficiency. And not only are we talking about efficiency, but this is also gonna change the way that our turbines sound. For many, maybe this is a disadvantage. The turbine actually gets quieter because there's less exhaust gases coming out of the engine. And we're using more fan air to actually propel the system forward. This would reduce the actual sound output. And of course, this would change the sound that we hear from the engine. And if you really do like the airliner noise that we get from that engine, it's very different than a typical turbojet engine. If you prefer that, this is more of what that radio controlled model engine would then start to sound like. Now you're probably wondering at this point, if we get such a performance difference where we can save all kinds of fuel, why haven't radio controlled manufacturers gone through with this design change and given us more options? Well, there's a couple good reasons as to why manufacturers haven't actually gone through this change. As you can imagine, anytime you add more parts, more components, the complexity of the assembly increases. And it's this complexity that makes it difficult. The assembly process is gonna take more time to do, the parts are gonna cost more, overall you're going to have a drastic increase in the total 
cost for all of these components in order to make this type of engine work. Another point here is that the guys running those types of RC jet engines really are not concerned with the amount of fuel that's being burned from their engine. Burning 20 to 30% more fuel in the jet engines that we use today is not a reason why someone is not going to get into this hobby. Now I'd love to challenge the RC jet engine manufacturers out there to take this proposal, take this design and refine it and come out with something that can show and demonstrate this type of concept. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.